Hey there fellow minnows, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio and I'd like to welcome you to part one of this video learning series working with shape keys in Blender. This is the intro video so the goal is to keep it short and sweet we really want to just get everyone familiar with shape keys and get everyone familiar with the Blender shape key interface. We're also really excited to put this series together because we get to shamelessly plug our new Unity 3D asset, Salsa with Randomize. Salsa and Randomize both take advantage of the cool things that shape keys bring to the table to create automated mouth and eye movements for your game and application characters. Man, it really brings them to life without a whole lot of effort. If you want to see how simple this really is, head on over to our YouTube channel and check out our other video learning series. So let's continue on and get everyone excited about shape keys. And if you happen to be a Unity user watching this, heck, pay it forward. Pick up a copy of Salsa with Randomize. Okay, shameless plug out. Let's get to business. First, a couple of caveats before we get started. This is not a modeling tutorial. I'm going to assume that you've got some basic modeling skills. If this is your first time out with a 3D application or with, with Blender, I'd suggest grabbing some intro videos on how to get started. I am going to have my screencast keys turned on, but I'm not really going to be going over the hot keys and the ins and outs of modeling. Now, some of you may be wondering what shape keys are. They're really just a mesh animation technique that animates vertex positions to deform a mesh without the need of armatures or bone rigs. So it takes a set of vertexes, which are defined in the key, and it has a starting and an ending position. And it will move those vertexes from start to end based on the value of the shape key. Now shape keys have a lot of synonyms. They're called by a lot of different names. Blender calls them shape keys, so that's why I'm calling them shape keys. That's what it says in the interface. We're going to try to keep it consistent here. However, Unity, some of the Autodesk applications, DAZ, most any other 3D application that supports shape keys, they call them by some different name. Blend shapes, morph targets, morphs. There's a lot of different names, but they all basically mean the same thing. Shape keys have quite a few benefits. The first is that they're really easy to implement, and we'll see that in the next video when we actually start creating and using shape keys. They're also great for mesh micro adjustments, which primarily we're talking about facial animations here. And trying to rig a face with bones, you've probably seen the videos or the screenshots, and there's just a ton of bones in there. Is it complicated? It depends on how comfortable you are with bones. But you're going to find out just how easy shape keys are to use. Now, shape keys aren't for everything. So there's certain animation types, and I'll demonstrate this in the next video as well, that just don't work with shape keys. Shape keys can be additive, and they can also be overdriven. What this means is that shape keys can build off of each other. You can add, a, say, an eyebrow move, a smile, an eye move, all separate shape keys. You can add them together to form an overall expression. Overdriven means that they can be driven beyond what they were intended to do. And we'll, we'll see that in the next video. Now, there's a couple of detractors to shape keys. They can be a little bit finicky since they're tied specifically to vertex morphology. So if your count or position change outside of the shape key interface, sometimes that can cause problems. And it's probably best to put it in as the last step in the workflow. And it's really recommended to apply all vertex modifiers prior to creating your shape keys. For example, the mirror modifier. If you try to apply a mirror modifier after you've already created shape keys, the interface won't let you do it. Okay, let's go over the interface. If you're not already on the object data panel, look for the icon that looks like a triangle mesh. Click on it. Now make sure your shape key shelf is open. You'll see something that looks similar to this if you don't have any shape keys. Now this list is a list of all the shape keys that you've created. And you can resize it so you can see them all, or you can just use this slider on the right hand side. The first column here is a shape key name. When a shape key is first created, it has a basic default name, and you can just change it by clicking in this box and typing a new name. Hit enter. The next column here is the value for the shape key. So by default in Blender, this value can range from 0 to 1. This can be adjusted 
Even after you've created your shape key, you can adjust this to limit the range of motion. Or you can adjust it to overdrive the range of motion. This next column is the mute button. It's a little eyeball. Really, it just is an enable or disable. So if I turn this shape key off, even if I'm adjusting it, it doesn't do anything on the model. It's disabled. Once I turn it back on, it enables it. Now, one thing you should also know is even if you have these disabled, they still will export out. Also of note is this first shape key that you see in the list. If your list is blank and you create a key, the first key is basis. And that's basically your default point that all other shape keys are based on. The basis key is not exported as part of your mesh. The first key, and these are all in index array, is the next shape in the list. So in this instance, it would be, say, small. This one would be index 0. And this is specifically in Unity is what I'm talking about here. So say small would be 0, say medium would be 1, large 2, and onward. Okay, moving down the panel here, we have a relative checkbox. For most applications, especially outside of Blender, you'll probably want to have this checked. What it really means is that you're going to be using the mode where each key is based on the basis key. And you also see that down here in the blend section. This is the shape that is used as the relative key. Now this can be changed, but it produces some kind of strange results. And if you're not familiar with it, you may not understand what's going on. So after we've got relative, we've got the name of the key, which we went over. We've also got this large slider value which is a little easier to use than these values up here, although you can just click and drag on these as well, and you'll see both that value and this one moving. We already went over the range, and we went over these, these blend options. Actually, we didn't go over this one. This is the vertex weight group, and this is kind of like a filter. I'll, I'll demo this in the next video because it's very useful if you're trying to make new shape keys. Now, Right under the name list, we have three icons. These are also very useful. The first is the pin. This pin it allows you to see a full on of each shape key without having to adjust the slider. So all you have to do is select it, and you can see what the full on of that shape key is. It's useful for just trying to find the shape key you're looking for, especially if you aren't that good at naming. OK, now this next option, this box with the four vertices on it here, uh, this one only applies in edit mode, and it allows you to actually adjust or scrub through your shape key while you're in edit mode. The normal operation is just to show the full on position. That way you're working with what your end result will be. Now, this last icon is very useful, especially if you've got a bunch of shape keys active and you want to reset everything back to zero. All you got to do, click that button and everything's reset. Okay, up on the upper right side, we've got this plus, which adds a shape key. I've already shown you that. You click that, you get a basic shape key with a default name. Followed by the plus is, of course, the minus. That deletes a shape key. Once you delete a shape key, that shape key is gone. But you can hit Control-Z and undo that action. Right below the plus and minus is the specials panel. This has some very powerful features, and we're going to demonstrate this in the next video. And last but not least, we've got these organizational arrows. These allow us to adjust where our shape keys exist in our list. Now, this is very useful for Salsa and Randomize because by default, Salsa looks for the first three shape keys, 0 through 2. And if you go ahead and add your shape keys for, say, small, medium, and large to those positions, you don't have any adjustments to make in the component. The same thing for randomize. It takes the next five. Three, four, five, six, and seven. So look up, down, left, right, and blink. If you put those in those positions, you don't have any adjustments to make in the component.
Okay, that covers the interface. In our next video, we're going to start making some shapes. See you soon. Thanks for watching.